Can you hear me, everyone? First off, uh, I want to thank everybody for coming. I don't think I've seen such a large gathering of cyclists in one place in my cycling career. This is great. Um, I want to share a little story that happened just a few minutes ago during the ride. As I was riding along, uh, first this young little boy came up, cycling by me, so I started talking to him, asking if he knew Richard and, and, and all of that. And, uh, he did. I asked him his name, his name was Nate. So we rode together, Nate kind of scooting ahead, kind of pulled him back a little bit. And another little guy came up, his name was Levi. And uh, the two of them, were, they were right out there pedaling hard. I had to hold them back a little bit. Um, Levi went down, popped right back up again. <laughs> that was awesome, funny. He was okay. Um, coming back here, I found out that their dad is Matt Lyon. He knew Richard very well. And also that Richard gave Levi the bike that he was on. That's Richard. I just want to uh, thank everybody again. I was the guy saying thank you at the turnaround point and uh, waving people past me. I wish I had one of those finger counters so as everybody went by, I'd go cut, 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 cut. Um, I'm kind of guessing there might be like 400 riders here. I don't know. <laughs> um, I, uh, I also, um, I just wanted to uh, spread the news that tomorrow afternoon, late afternoon, I believe, is going to be a ride for Kelly Bo. Um, he was a cyclist who was who was hit and uh, by the uh, the DUI driver in I think Waybridge. Um, I think the ride is taking place at four, but um, please check the internet to find out information on that. Um, is it four? Okay, yes, four o'clock. So, so anyway, that was, you know, obviously another tragic event. And he, I know he's been on my mind this week and, uh, and ever since I learned about this. So, again, I just, I cannot convey how much I appreciate seeing the energy I've gotten from seeing everybody here. It, it, this is, and I'm sure Richard is up there somewhere and he's smiling down. It's like, I was saying, wow. <laughs> Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce Tom Moody. Um, he's going to talk briefly about the foundation that we have set up for Richard. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Tom Moody. I'm the steering officer of the Foundation. And, uh, oh, sorry. I've been an officer of GMBC for a while and uh, been behind uh, by state deposits. And, oh, there we go. Sorry. Um, and so, Last week when this happened, we got together and thought, what are we going to do going forward? And there are a couple of things that we've done. We've created a foundation. So I will figure out a way to get the, uh, the details of that into the free class tomorrow. Uh, so for anybody who wants to contribute, we think that the, the board is um, going to ultimately figure out what the mission of that is. But bike safety will certainly be a piece of it. Um, then I think we'll also, the foundation will be supporting uh, an, an, a, an annual ride. And the details of that are also, will be determined by the board of the foundation. So we all, um, thank you all very much for coming. You know, Richard is smiling down on us and giving us this beautiful day. I think my guess is almost everybody here is going to go ride some more. So enjoy yourself. Uh, thanks for coming. Okay, at this time I'd like to introduce Peter Hawk, if you would like to say something. Thank you. Yeah, I'd just like to share something with you guys. Our family was impacted by a tragic event four years ago. So we identify greatly with what has happened today. We've lost two young, wonderful men in the prime of life. But one of the things that I've come to learn in the last four years is that death is in fact a part of life, a realistic part of life. 
and the tragedy lies with those of us who remain. Whether we live to be 25, 95, or 105 is really a detail when you look at the sands of time. Because life is composed of the body, which comes and it goes. And it's composed of spirit, which is a permanent event. So Richard is here. Richard is current. The young man from CBU is a current event, will continue to be a current event, and we should honor that by keeping the black hole that we all share at a minimum and really working toward positivity, such as the foundation and whatever, what other good news comes out of this. Thank you very much. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce Steve Fisher. Um, I'm president of Fellowship of the Wheel, uh, a Heinsberg-founded uh, organization, 700 strong. And let's not forget that Richard was an avid mountain biker as well. Uh, I would see him in the Heinsberg Town Forest often. Uh, unlike, unlike myself, I would drive up to the park site and then ride around the forest with my dogs. He would cycle, you know, up Hayden Hill East or West or Texas Hill and then do laps at twice my pace. Um, Fellowship of the Wheel, we have a board meeting on Tuesday and we're gonna be doing some work in the Heinsberg Town Forest this year, likely uh, sheep thrills and passing the horizon, uh, re-energizing re of the trail, thank you. Um, and I think that we're gonna dedicate that to Richard. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody like to say anything? Uh, please step up. I'd like to introduce Roger Fred. Uh, hello, everyone. I worked with uh, Richard for the better part of 13 years, and uh, I can tell you he's nothing short of amazing. He, uh, he was a cycling Wikipedia, and uh, we all, did. the staff, we all depended on him. There's so much information, as many of you, I assume, benefited from uh, his helping you with the bike. Yesterday, at the bike swap, the staff, we had a pre meeting before the bike swap starts with a new owner of Earl's Joe Trainer to pay tribute to you, Richard, for RT, as we eventually call him, and uh, went on how much our team and to him and to the staff in general. At one point, uh, I was trying to figure out how many bike fits. I mean, Richard knew everything. Cycling Wikipedia, he said, cycling history, cycling knowledge, but bike fit was one of his specialties. And he kind of calculated that he did somewhere between 2,000 and 2,500 bike fits. Wow, that is. So somewhere out there scattered probably across the United States are people who benefited from his expertise. He was a constant professional. He'll be missed, but he's not gonna be forgotten. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Would anybody like to say anything? Because the mic is, uh, it's a friendly mic. I'd like to introduce Gretchen Stokes. Stokes. I just have a really short story, which is, um, I was good friends with Richard for a fairly short time. And uh, he told me about some things he did when he finished college, and then he, um, joined the Vermont Bicycle Tours, and how he related to me is he found his tribe. Thank you, Gretchen. I'd like to introduce Sandy Lord right now. Hi, everybody. Successful. I led bike tours for VBT, and Richard was part of our staff. Um, I didn't lead any trips with him, but I was 
in the same pool of readers that Red Shirt um, got to know him a little through staff parties and checking in and out for trips. But a couple of days ago, I was at home and and I was outside in the driveway and this neighbor of mine comes walking over and he says, as he approaches me, he says, Richard. And I said, yeah. And he shared that um, uh, several years ago, he and his wife were going on a big trip out west, a bicycle touring trip in his packs and they were going to be camping along the way. And he had gone into Earl's and gotten into a conversation with Richard, and Richard gave him some great advice about bicycling, which I'd like to share with you. Uh, he said, don't worry about being in shape. Don't worry about whether you can do it. Um, and this is going to be a trip of a month long. It's a serious trip. He said, uh, just realize you are going to have an adventure. And do you realize how few people in their lives have a true adventure? And he also said, um, if you get tired, just slow down. And, or walk your bike. Look around. You're in a beautiful place. Enjoy where you are. And the last thing he said is, uh, the, only have to, the only thing you have to do is eat, sleep, and ride your bike. And what could be better than that? Thank you, Susan. Anyone else? I'd like to introduce Kirsten. Thank you. Um, I wanted to share a story about Richard. Um, I guess about six years ago, I was going through a divorce and feeling really lost and like I needed to find my people. And, um, and I found Richard and the group of friends that I've been riding with ever since. And when I came out to join the group, I think I don't I had my radio old racing shorts and TV and some torn up jersey where there would be a shirt full of holes or something like that. And Richard was like, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is not going to work. And so he, the, the very next ride, he came back with everything I have on right now. His helmet, jersey, this neon shorts which is amazing. and um but we wore the same set of shoes and one time we went for a ride and he I forgot my shoes and he just gave me and he, you know he knew I would wear this hideous couple and he knew I was the right person for it and he wanted me out there riding and feeling comfortable and this is how he was for everybody you know if he had something that, that he could use he would just give it to me Thank you. I'd like to introduce Steve Barner now. I'm dangerous about it. <coughs> this one. Uh, I didn't know Richard real well. He uh, was a huge favor one time. And, uh, and I was a roommate of uh, a friend of mine several years. And um, I did uh, want to share with you, and maybe this is a good way for us to end up and like somebody else wants to speak here. Um, you know, I don't ride with uh, earbuds in my ear, so I tend to sing to myself as, as I ride. And uh, I don't know if Richard, I think maybe he was too young to uh, the uh, amazing blind gal. But there's an amazing Blind Bell song that I'm going to sing to you right now because it really speaks to me um, about something like this. Help me down, help me down, put my feet back on the ground. Help me try to live my life alone. Sorry. Puts me down, it puts me down. Still my head is spinning round. I can't stand to live my life alone. And I'm so glad 
that I could have known you, and I'm so sad to see you go, to see you go, see you go, leave me high, leave me low, tell me why I have to know, I must learn to live my life alone. See me high, see me low, see me right before you go. Leave me here, live my life alone. And I'm so glad that I could have and I'm so sad to see you go, see you go, see you go. stories, uh, just raise your hand. I'd like to introduce George Rooney. I'd like to introduce Jen Decker right now. I didn't know Richard, but I wanted to speak because I'm um, 47 years old. And so the story touched me in terms of just thinking about what it means to be lost from the world when you're just 47. And I just feel like for me, what I wanted to just share something that being 47 means to me, which is getting to the point in life where you spend a lot of time really taking care of other people and giving a lot, but also you've gotten to the point where you know yourself and 
you know what you love, and maybe you love riding, maybe you love driving fast cars, but whatever it is, you do it, and you think about what the world needs from you, and what the world needs from you is just to be the best person that you can be, to not compromise your ideals, to stand up and you're not going to worry so much about what other people think anymore because you're 47. And I also just want to share, I used to be a youth group leader and I've worked with children and young people all my life and one of the pearls of wisdom that um, one of my mentors taught me, he said, you know, whenever he's around young people, he said, if you see somebody who's not using their common sense, just loan them a little bit of yours. And I think that's just a really loving way that we can go around the world promoting safety. And lastly, all I wanted to say is I had to drive over here today and bring my bike, but as a result, I was just really stunned to see all the people drive, uh, all the people riding over. And it was really moving to me to just pass groups of cyclists. And what I just noticed is how much I love everyone. So I just want you all to know that you're loved out there on your bicycles. And we just all need to keep spreading the love and keep on riding. Thank you, Jen. I'm going to pass the mic now to John, and we'll uh, and we'll uh, do the closing comments. I personally, thank you again. Thank you. Pretty much the same words. Uh, just thank you for coming out. Just amazing to see the long train of bicycles that we had out there, and people, and the colors. All for Richard. When you go out on your rides today or tomorrow or next weekend, just go out and be safe and uh, enjoy the day. Thank you again. <laughs>